How's it going, everyone? Bob here, amateur radio call sign Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. I like to make antennas here where I live in a home that's governed by a homeowners association, and I make those antennas stealth, incognito, they just blend in. Many times I take commercially available antennas and I adapt them to my very specific situation. So maybe it's an antenna that's meant for use in plain open sight, permanently installed at your home, or perhaps on a POTA activation or field day. And today I'm going to take the Gable Radio RPG antenna system and adapt it for my use here in the HOA. Let me show you what modifications I'm going to do. Gable Radio recently introduced on their Amazon store this common mode current filter, a uh, choke and it can operate up to 1500 watts. Obviously, you're not going to take this on a soda activation, but perhaps for permanent or semi-permanent installation at the QTH or on field day, this would be of interest to you. I'll leave a link in the description below, along with any discount codes if there are any available at the time you are watching this video. So exactly what am I doing? I'm taking the commercially available GRA RPG. It's a coil antenna. You're familiar with our coil antennas. This gives us the opportunity to adjust our coil to the frequency or band that we want to be operating on. I'm going to be operating very specifically on 20 meters. You'll understand why in a minute. It also comes with this man pack collapsible antenna. It's not a 3 8 by 24. It's an M10 thread. It comes with this really short and thin um, whip and that is a stinger whip and I'm going to put this two piece stinger whip on top of this coil and that's how I'm going to go stealth here in the HOA. It's small, it's a black color on the polymer, it's going to blend in around some trees here in a shrubbery bed at my HOA. That is how I'm going to go stealth. I'm choosing 20 meters because the coil's doing much of the work because that stinger whip is pretty short. But I'll demonstrate to you that we can still make contacts, voice single sideband contacts. We'll run some FT8, we'll do some whisper. We'll prove it out that this would be a viable option for you if you live in a restricted community and you're really just trying to hide the antenna while you have fun in the shack making contacts all around the world. So what else do we need to do to get this set up ready? The other things that we need to be prepared for is how we're going to install this. I mix and match my gear all the time. And I do want to say that if you wanted to do something alternate where you wanted a longer whip, you could go with a man pack collapsible. This is uh, from Chameleon Antenna. I'll leave a link in the description below. Here is a black man pack collapsible that's available on Amazon. You would need an adapter to go from M10 to 3 8 by 24 because both of these are 3 8 by 24. At that point, if you're going to go 3 by 24, you could put an SS17, an MFJ 1979, a 10, a 17 foot telescoping antenna on here. But again, I'm trying to stay stealth in the HOA. So how am I going to set this up? Well, I'm going to use my chameleon ground spike because when I go outside for long periods of time, I want something that is stainless and durable and I don't have to worry about weather. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular adapter that you haven't seen before. Let me explain it to you real quick. The review introducing the Cha Blank adapter is ready to go. This one is showing in a BNC. It will also be available in an SO239. So a 3 8 by 24 antenna will come into the top. There is a Delrin spacer breaking the continuity between the top portion of this metal and the bottom portion. Your wire on the inside is coming out the BNC. So signal coming down the 3 8 by 24 and coming out the BNC via your coax to your transceiver. And this is just a 3 8 by 24 ground stud. So that would go into my ground spike. But I'm also going to use the Cha Puck because I'm a huge fan of radial ground plugs. You know that I introduced this well over a year ago. My situation where I adapt. Um, a grounding system, a radial system to any portable antenna or almost any portable antenna. Today, a lot of manufacturers have introduced these pucks. They really make it convenient. So now all of a sudden, what I have is a ground spike, a radial puck, an adapter to take my 3 8 by 24 
RPG. And then on the top of my RPG will be my two piece whip. I'm explaining this all now because quite frankly, when I go out in the field and put this together, it's going to take me seconds to get this into the ground. So let's talk about these radials for just a second. As I've mentioned, I've done um, a release video, a review video, really a demonstration on how to make your own grounding system, your own ground radials for portable ops, all your portable antennas. So I'm just going to show you real quick how to put together the radial kit. Uh, the reason why I am making one now is because this is going into a shrubbery bed. I'm using brown wire. I want every part of this to be stealth incognito. I use high quality banana plugs because banana plugs, when they snap, you will hurt yourself on the piece of metal where they snap apart. So if you buy garbage banana plugs, let's get in front of this camera and it's not going to, nope, it's not. Let's get me off the screen, go back to overhead. If you buy cheap banana plugs and they snap, those little tabs turn into razor blades. So I use some of the best banana plugs out there when I make my radial kits. Let's show you how to do that real quick. I use b and Go Wire because it's silky smooth. You've seen me many times, backyard portable, just tossing my bundle of three wires and being able to separate them very quickly. They're cut to 16 and a half feet long. I'm going to attach them to this banana plug and I will leave a link in the description below to the original video that I did describing this whole setup and all the different antenna systems that this works with. This banana plug has two um, threaded studs and I didn't get a small enough flat screwdriver head and now I have one that's the right size. And you'll just unscrew these two studs to give yourself the ability to put your wires down the inside of the banana plug. It'll make sense to you here in just a second. You probably already know exactly what I'm doing. So the two threaded studs are on opposite sides of the barrel. And then inside is where we're going to insert our wire. So now that that's ready, let's get our wire stripped. I strip about an inch worth of insulation off of each of these wires because then I can double over my wire on the inside of that banana plug. So as I pull off my insulation, you can see that I spin and turn the insulation because that just helps from my perspective to make the wire easier to work with when I'm trying to group it together and twist these three sections together. We'll be there in just a second. All right, two and one final one. If you want to ask the question, why 16 and a half feet? Well, let me tell you the scientific method that I uh, used to arrive at this conclusion. Um, the Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet was one of the first antenna kits I purchased many years ago when I first started in amateur radio. And that comes in a 33 foot uh, radial system. And I just uh, decided I didn't want to spread out 33 feet of radials. I operate backyard portable here in the homeowners association very often. And to fit in the backyard, I just decided that I was going to cut those three radials in half. So 16 and a half feet. And that's what I have been operating with. I create bundles of three wires per banana plug, and I spread out three wires when I'm operating on most of the higher bands than into 20. Sometimes on 40 meters, I'll use two bundles. And now I'm just gonna fold this over one time or fold it in half the stripped end. And see that kind of doubles up the amount of wire that I'm gonna put into the end of this banana plug. So I create bundles of three. My scientific method was to take the Wolf River Coil 33 feet and, you know, make it half the size so it fit in the backyard. And that's just worked for me. Um, and I stumbled into this Go wire and it's phenomenally silky. You just don't tangle the wires with this Go. Don't, I mean, you can use cheap wire for ground radials. Many people do. 
Um, they brag about that. That's great. Um, that's That works well for them. I don't use garbage wire for ground radials. I use Bientech Go because then it doesn't tangle. And I guess when I go outside, I'll just have to show you how easily this does throw and unwrap. All right, there we go. Three wires together in one banana plug. So let me talk about the original system that I set up. And I created um, just this little alligator clip here. It's a high quality alligator clip. It's a Mueller alligator clip. And I put two very high quality ring terminals on the end of this and they will receive my banana plugs. And so what I have is a really versatile system. So I can use my banana plug system with any puck system that is out there. I use it with my chameleon all the time and chameleon sells uh, radials with uh, plugs on them. Or if you're using somebody else's system, I'm demonstrating with the chameleon system here and I wanted to install my banana plugs on this without a puck, all I need to do is to stick this in the ground and clamp my alligator clip on it and I have banana plug radials. Watch the video that I leave in the description below and you're going to see just how versatile this is. Okay, we've got radials, we've got all the equipment, we're going to set up this stinger, we're going to operate on 20 meters, and again, 20 meters is what we're going to use because I'm using a coil antenna, so it's monobanded, right? I'm going to dial it in somewhere in 20 meters to where my, my SWR is good across a broad swath of the spectrum um, over 20 meters, and then I'm going to operate all up and down 20 meters. I'm going to do single sideband, I'm going to do FT, and I'm going to do whisper. And I'll show you that even with this tiny little whip, that what we have is a fairly effective antenna system. Again, this antenna system wasn't designed specifically for HOA. It's a very high quality, durable antenna system from G Gable Radio. I'm adapting it specifically to the HOA. I'm going stealth. Let's go do it. Most of my videos take days, weeks, sometimes months to complete from start to finish. While I was working on this video, Gable reached out and said, offer a discount to your viewers. So this video will be released late October, 2024. Check the description below to see if there's a current available discount on the RPG. Yep, there I am tossing that BN Techco wire. I told you to pay attention in the shack because once I got outside, it would be put together really quickly. It took me longer to put that self-adhering tape around my connectors because this will be outside for a number of days. Here in the Florida rain, I don't want any water getting in my coax. Here I'm taking that brown wire. I'm just spreading it over top of a mulch bed because remember this is all about going stealth incognito in an HOA. This antenna wasn't made for HOA. I'm adapting this commercially available antenna system to put in my HOA stealth hiding in plain sight. It wasn't intended that you would put this tiny little whip antenna and try to operate on 20 meters. That's what I'm doing to be stealth in the HOA. Yep, I did just toss a branch there. That's left over from Milton. Oh my goodness. Milton left a mess in our front yard and a mess for a lot of people. Do reach out and provide some help to people that have been impacted by this if you have the ability to do so. My wife and I are quite blessed. We had minimal damage, nothing of significance. So with the radials all set up, let's get back in the shack and start to operate. Using my SA-1 analyzer outside, I did adjust the coil on this antenna, trying to reach resonance around 14.160. Then I came into the shack and actually hooked up the analyzer to an app on my computer so I could show you this plot. I chose this sweet spot in the band because I'm trying to operate on the extremes. I'm trying to operate some FT8 and then I'm going to operate some single sideband. And I just wanted to see if my bandwidth was going to be significantly resonant uh, across the full breadth so that I could not have to go back out and do any additional tuning. And absolutely, I'm resonant good enough across the entire band that I can do the bipolar extremes of what I'm trying to operate. Also, we'll throw some whisper in here so you can see what the propagation looks like using this antenna. 
a few individuals with some disposable income and the desire to participate in what I'm doing here on the HOA Ham channel have joined my Patreon account and they're responsible for the two whisper transmitters at the top of this board. I set up this program and I just run as long as I want it to. It can be 24 hours, 12 hours, three hours, five minutes, whatever I choose. Here I ran this weak signal propagation transmitter for about 12 hours. Here are the results across the globe. And here are the results specifically in the United States of America, or I should say North America. And these are quite impressive on this small antenna. One of the greatest challenges of using an antenna like this, hiding in plain sight on that tiny whip, is it is really compromised. So I won't be breaking through, you know, massive pileups. I have received five nine reports. I'm going to show you. I think it's a four four report. You can do respectable voice contacts with this, but do temper your expectations. For those of you that do digital, this is a home run setup for you. I'm new to FT8, so don't mock me too much. But in a 15 minute session here, I was able to respond to three individuals calling CQ as well as call CQ myself. I picked up Kilo Juliet 4 India Hotel November, Whiskey Alpha 4 Tango Echo Delta, Kilo Papa 4 Juliet Mike Tango. I was responding to them and then I decided call CQ yourself. Kilo India 5 Juliet Mike Lima and Alpha Charlie 9 Hotel Papa all responded to me. I'm new to PSK Reporter as well. I don't think I've got this figured out yet, but I do believe the larger bubbles here are representative of those that I'm hearing and are hearing me. Again, over a 15 minute session using a compromised antenna like this, I don't think that's too bad. Great antenna setup, hiding, stealth, in the HOA, in plain sight, if digital is the way you like to operate. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. 5 9 Tampa, Florida. Okay, busted. It wasn't really a 5 9 contact. It was more like a 5 3 to 5 4. I just turned on the transceiver. I just hit the record button, and all of a sudden he started calling CQ Parks on the air. I did what comes naturally. I responded. I keyed up. I told him 5 9 because that's what comes out of our mouth so often. Bottom line is, it was an intelligible, quick QSO. We understood each other. Here's my 4 4 QSO. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. QSL, you're 5454, Tampa, Florida. So if you're like me and you actually enjoy the neighborhood that you live in, in spite of the challenges that you might have to overcome, you need to operate incognito hiding in plain sight. Not a problem. There's lots of antennas out there that will let us do that. Remember, I've gone to an extreme here. This Gable GRA RPG comes with a man pack collapsible antenna. It's not meant to be as compromised as I've forced it to be. I really wanted to go compact, small, and hide behind that tree. And you can do that too. Make yourself some digital and single sideband contacts. Hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you soon. It won't be long before there's more stealth antenna videos coming. 73 friends.